Hey everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guide in the In Pioneer quest. Now, for this quest, you need the following requirements: you need to have level 55 fire making, level 52 crafting, and level 53 fletching. None of which can be boosted, so you're gonna have to have the actual physical levels themselves. Um, and option, no, but this is more for the rewards part of this quest is uh, level 51 slayer, and I'll explain that uh, at the end of this video. Um, as for items, all you're gonna need is some food. Uh, um, weapons and armor um, to sort of defend yourselves against the uh, monsters that you encounter during this quest and the main bit again for the rewards after the quest um, but just make sure you have got five free inventory spaces. The only other item that I would recommend is having the Phoenix Lair uh, Teleport Scroll if you wish to buy one in from the Grand Exchange as it takes you right outside the quest start point. If not, being near uh, one of the relative lodestones can also be used instead. So that's it for requirements and items, now onto quest starting points. As I just said, um, the start point is just outside the Phoenix Lair which you can reach by using a Phoenix Lair Teleport Scroll from the Grand Exchange. If not, um, I'm currently at the Eagle's Peak Lodestone uh, and you can travel uh, north from here to reach the quest start point if you wish but if you just watch where I'm going I'll show you where to go So, just outside the cave, you'll see a priest of Guffix. Uh, so, you want to speak to him. The priest will explain about the phoenix residing within the cave and that it's reaching the end of its 500 year lifespan. And to ensure its survival, a ritual needs to be performed, but because the phoenix is injured, it cannot perform the ritual of rebirth. The priest says he's too old to perform the ritual, uh, but has the required ingredients. So what you want to do is obviously receive the items needed uh, for the quest by talking to him and going through all of the chat options and he'll also tell you a bit about the cave. So after obtaining the items and going through all the dialogue you now want to enter the lava filled phoenix lair which is guarded by several non-aggressive um, greater like sort of thralls they're known as but you've got like a greater reborn mage, greater reborn warrior etc etc. Now um, they're not aggressive they did used to be in the original quest so uh, it has made it a lot easier but basically what you need to do is each cave that you enter will be different uh, for each player in the sort of order of the trees um, but there are different trees in each of these caves and what you need to do is go and locate each one of the trees and um so what you need to do is find each of the trees by navigating through the cave uh, and there's one tree per cave and you'll need to use the harvest twig options on the trees which will then give you the relevant twigs so if you harvest the cinnamon tree you'll end up with some cinnamon twigs and so forth so like I said, the order of the caves is different for each uh, player, however um, there's no sort of complexity with it, um, as like I said, the monsters will be non-aggressive to you, so all you need to do is make sure you find the tree, and you can kind of use the mini-map to determine where it is. So what you want to do is go for each of the trees, uh, each of the caves even, and obtain the different twigs until you end up with five in total, and I'll speak to you when you arrive at the final cave. So upon arrival at the final cave you'll see the wounded phoenix and in this cave there's an incomplete pyre and a shrine containing a book. Uh, you want to take the book and read through that. After that you want to use the fletch option on the twigs to turn them into the respective uh, ribbons. So you'll turn the cinnamon in, uh, twigs into a cinnamon weaving ribbon and the same for all the other trees as well. Once you've turned them all into ribbons, you want to use the craft option on the pyre and a cutscene will show you the phoenix moving onto the pyre. And finally you want to use the light option on the pyre and a cutscene will show the phoenix burning, turning into ash and then the phoenix is then reborn. So talk to the reborn phoenix and she will explain everything and thank you as she will also give you 5 phoenix quills and the ability to challenge her in the future. So we now want to leave the cave and talk to the priest to finish the quest. The cat 
So, after you finish speaking to him, well, congratulations, you have completed the Empire Need quest. You're awarded 1 quest point, 14,400 fire making experience, 12,500 fletching experience, 11,556 crafting experience, a very random amount, um, access to the Phoenix Lair once per day, which is a part of the distractions and diversions, 5 Phoenix Quills, which are worth uh, currently around 40k, and the chance to receive a Phoenix Eglin while doing the Phoenix Lair, and raising the pet requires 72 summoning. So there we go, pretty easy quest. The main thing really is, um, like I said, it now unlocks the Phoenix Lair um, distraction diversion that can be completed daily. Um, so basically, how you complete that is very easy and it's very much like the quest itself. So uh, you go through the cave and what you have to do is navigate through the ca uh, caverns and uh, obviously find the respective trees in order to get the roots. Um, I believe that some of the monsters will now become aggressive when you're actually completing the distraction and diversion. But like I said though, it is very similar to the quest itself, so all you have to do is navigate through the cave and get all five of the uh, trees and their respective twigs and you'll end up in the final room. Then what you want to do in the final cavern is uh, weave the twigs into ribbons like you did in the quest and set up the um, pyre. However, before the phoenix goes onto the pyre, you'll need to defeat it first. Um, they've got a combat level of 84 and her main attack is magic based. Um, but to be honest, the life points of the phoenix is very low. You'll take him out with quite a few, um, just a couple of hits as you'll see my character do. When the phoenix has then been defeated, she'll crawl onto the pyre and then you can light it. And after the phoenix has uh, been consumed by the flames, she'll be born and then you can talk to her to receive the reward. The reward you'll get each time from the Phoenix is 7,500 fire making experience, 3,000 fletching, 1,000 crafting and 500 slayer experience, however you will get 5,000 slayer experience the first time that you defeat the Phoenix using the distraction and diversion. You also get another 5 Phoenix quills and a chance to receive a Phoenix egg by choosing the exit option from the Phoenix chamber. So it is important you use the exit option because if you right click the cave there is an escape option which will give you no chance of receiving the egg on the way out. Uh, and like I said, you will uh, if you do receive an egg, you will need level 72 summoning uh, required to hatch the egg within the cavern. And depending on what you do, will depend on what uh, phoenix you get. So you'll get a cute phoenix egglin by clapping the egg, uh, and you'll get a mean phoenix egglin by kicking the egg. Now one thing you can do with this distraction and diversion to make it easier and actually part of the rewards will contribute to this as well. So you can do a speed run option. So basically what you do is uh, if you bring 10 unnoted Phoenix Quills with you, which are the ones that you get from the Phoenix to reward anyway, um, you can click the cave and then there's an option to use the Phoenix Feathers to go straight to the final room. So you don't have to then worry about all the um, trees. All you then got to do is fight the Phoenix itself. So I would recommend that and um, because obviously the Phoenix gives you five uh, quills each time that obviously means you only need to buy five from the Grand Exchange or you can even do it as one time you don't speed run the cave and then another time you do so then you keep collecting ten uh, Phoenix feathers each time on your own. But yeah, it's quite a handy distraction and diversion to do, and obviously, like I said, you do get that XP from the Phoenix as well, which is quite handy considering it only takes like about 20 seconds to kill the Phoenix anyway. But yeah, other than that, don't think you'll run into any problems following my guide. However, if you do get stuck, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you out as best as I can. If not, thank you for watching. Please make sure you like, favourite, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share with your friends. Cheers, everyone. Bye bye.